as we looked at in the last video, using a premium financial newswire service or using the Zenith platform with its immediate news updates can provide you with a very clear edge in trading news releases. Now that you have a clearly defined edge in terms of receiving the news as quickly as possible and ahead of a great deal of other traders, you need to know how to actually trade the number that is released. When trading the NFP release, there is a basic premise to follow, which essentially suggests that if the NFP release is good, you look to buy the US dollar against other currencies. And if the NFP release is bad, you look to sell the US dollar against other currencies. The information given by the Reuters poll number can be extremely useful in this regard, as it gives us both the industry average expected as well as the range of forecasts given, so we know how the market is gauging the number ahead of the release, and hence we can judge the likely impact of the number. For example, a number in line with the consensus view may see only mild USD buying if the number is expected weaker than the previous number. However, if the number expected is to show an improvement from the previous number, and the release prints in line with expectations, then we may see more pronounced USD buying. If the number is better than the consensus view and beats expectations, then dollar buying is likely to be quite sharp. This may be even more the case if the number prints above the upper limit of the forecasted range contributed to the Reuters poll. Similarly, a number printing below expectations can see USD spelling. Again, this selling may be more pronounced the worse than this is. Let's look at some examples to get a clearer understanding of these dynamics. The actual NFP release here was 280k against the expected 225k release and the previous 223k release with a Reuters poll range of 140k to 350k. We can see here that the number strongly beats market expectations and was in the very top of the forecast range, causing dollar yen to jump over 100 pips in a minute. Here, the actual release was 126k against an expected 244k, a prior 264k, with a range of 195k to 290k. Here we can see that the number wildly missed the market's expectations, missing the Reuters poll number, but also falling far below even the lowest forecasted number of 195k. Again, we saw USD plummet by over 100 pips against the euro in this example. Now that you can see the potential for trading the number release, you need to establish some clear rules for consistent application on the day of the release. A solid strategy to use for trading the number is as follows. 1. Enter trade as soon as the number is released. 2. Stop should be 30 pips. 3. As price spikes 30 pips in favour, move stop to entry. 4. At the close of the 1 minute bar, exit trade. As we are simply trading the number, leveraging the anticipated market reaction, you need to be extremely swift in your application and enter as soon as the number hits based on the premise of buying USD if the number is good and selling USD if the number is bad. The objective is to aim for a minimum of one times risk and generally look to achieve around two to three times risk. The first minute following the release generally sees the strongest reaction and so this is the time horizon you should aim to target. You could alternatively close half your position at the close of the one minute bar and leave half to ride playing for more. There will be times when this works out and you catch some good follow through and there will be times when this doesn't work out and the spike simply reverses. So for a consistently profitable strategy, banking that first one minute bar is the preferred option. It is important to understand that as with all trading strategies, there will be times when you lose. Unfortunately, there is no way around this, and so you need to remember to always manage your risk and trade with stops. 
Trading the NFP can be particularly challenging because of its nature as a market focus point and key barometer engaging Fed monetary policy. And so there will be times when the simple premise of buying USD on a good number and selling USD on a bad number doesn't work out. As we discussed previously, depending on the economic conditions at the time, the actual number release can take on different meanings and is subject to varying interpretation by key market players driving the action. This can sometimes lead to an unexpected reaction to the number. Let's look at an example. The February 2015 NFP release saw a 201k print versus an expected 234k print and a prior release of 329k. So in this case, there was a clear miss of consensus and a vast decline from the previous number. So we would expect the dollar to go down based on the basic premise we discussed. Actually, as you can see in the chart, we saw the dollar pop higher. The reason for this was that it was the fifth consecutive print over 200k. At the start of last year, there was a lot of anticipation in the markets regarding the possibility of the Fed lifting rates in the summer, and the NFP reports were used as a key indicator of whether or not America was on course for this. So although the print was a miss, it was still deemed a strong enough figure to keep the Fed on course to raise rates sooner rather than later, and hence we saw USD buying instead of USD selling on the weak number. Thank you.